Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Danielle and in today's video we're going to be making my recipe for bang bang cauliflower lettuce wraps. walk you through it step by step and make sure that you are watching the video all the way to the end especially if you're a beginner because I'm going to give you the keys. The keys are basically the keys to success for you to complete this recipe. It's going to be tips and tricks and just things that I think are the most important for you to focus on in order for you to complete the recipe successfully. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I did was just gather all of my ingredients and um, there's kind of two separate sets of ingredients. Your ingredients for your cauliflower and then you have your ingredients for your bang bang sauce. So for the cauliflower what you're going to need is just one head of cauliflower and then you're going to need salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika and flour and then you're also going to need some water. And then to make the bang bang sauce you need mayo and sweet chili sauce and then if you want to add a little more spice to it you can also add sriracha so you want to work on the cauliflower first the first thing you're going to do is just take your head of cauliflower and then you're going to break it down by removing the florets from the bulb of it so all you want to do is kind of cut into it cut around it in a diagonal pattern so that you're going in at an angle to get that stem out of it How big or small you want to cut it is really up to you. If you wanted to cut it a little bit smaller, then you would get more surface area for the breading, which would make the entire cauliflower a little bit more crunchy. But if you wanted it to be more meaty, then you could also cut it larger. What I find though is that no matter how you're cutting it, you do end up with smaller pieces because you know it naturally has um, pieces that are smaller that attach to the main root, or not the root, but you know, like the... It's the, uh, oh my gosh, what is it, what is it, what is it, what is it, what is it? It's the, what is it, the stump, on the stump of a tree? So you have a tree, you got a tree. Here's your stump, here's your branches and your leaves. So some of the leaves, some of the branches are like naturally smaller. So when you're cutting it, you'll see that you'll naturally get smaller pieces. So um, you can then go ahead and cut your cauliflower either bigger or smaller. It depends on you, what you like. If you like it more meaty, then cut it bigger. If you like it more crunchy, then cut it smaller. You know. Okay, so moving along. Once you have all your cauliflower cut, the next thing you wanna do is throw it all into a colander and then go ahead and rinse it all off just to make sure there's no dirt or soot on it. Once you have your cauliflower completely cleaned, the next thing you want to do is start working on your batter. And the reason you're going to do a batter is kind of twofold. You want to have a vehicle not only to season your cauliflower, but also to bread it. Because if you put the seasoning directly onto the cauliflower, it won't stick. Even if the cauliflower is wet, it won't really um, be seasoned like you want it to. So the batter kind of provides you a way to season it, but also to help the breading stick to the cauliflower as well. So let's go ahead and start the batter. I started with a half cup of flour and then I added about a teaspoon of salt and a half teaspoon of garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika. And then I added about a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Once you have all your seasonings in, then you just wanna add in about a cup of water and give it a whisk. You really wanna make sure that you're getting all of the lumps and clumps out of your batter because if you don't, you're gonna end up with raw lumps of batter on your cauliflower. And after the cauliflower is breaded, the flour won't have an opportunity to cook and you're gonna bite directly into it when you start to eat your cauliflower. So definitely make sure that you're thoroughly mixing your batter and the best way to do that, in my opinion, is by using a whisk. So just go ahead and whisk it up until you get rid of all the lumps. So now that the batter is made, we're gonna go ahead and start battering the cauliflower. And what you wanna do is make sure that you get each piece very well coated because that's gonna determine how much of the breading is able to stick to the cauliflower. And then also you wanna make sure that before you're actually putting the cauliflower into the breading, that you're shaking off the excess batter because if you don't do that, all the batter that's still on the cauliflower that's extra is gonna fall off into the breading. The breading is gonna stick to it and it's gonna, you're, you're gonna have a lot of like large clumps of just breaded batter, if that makes sense. Just save yourself the trouble and go ahead and shake off the cauliflower before you put it into the breading. In order to bread it, I went ahead and put some just plain breadcrumbs into a gallon size Ziploc bag because it's just, I feel like it's easier just to be able to shake it up as opposed to trying to toss the breadcrumbs onto the cauliflower on a plate. It's just easier to put it in a bag and shake it up. You can use unseasoned breadcrumb because we seasoned the batter, but if you wanted to use seasoned breadcrumb, if that's all you have on hand, you definitely can. 
Okay, so at this point, you're gonna choose how you're gonna cook your cauliflower. I'm gonna cook mine in the air fryer. So if you have an air fryer, you're gonna put it directly into your air fryer basket or your air fryer uh, trays. So I went ahead and put all of my cauliflower directly onto the tray. If you're gonna be cooking your cauliflower in the oven, then you wanna put it on a parchment paper lined baking sheet. So yeah, go ahead and bread all your cauliflower and then put it on whatever you're gonna be using to cook it in. So the next step I feel is pretty important and that's to take some cooking, oh I forgot to mention cooking spray. Okay, so I forgot to mention that you need cooking spray, but you will see that in the picture. Um, sorry. So the next step is to spray down your cauliflower with some cooking spray. And you don't really need to like concentrate it on the, like on each individual piece of cauliflower. You can just like give it one good spray all across the tray and that's enough. So what that's gonna do is make the breading more um, crunchy. It's gonna add a little bit of oil, it's gonna, it just makes it taste better. We all know that fried food tastes good, and this is a good way to get that fried taste without actually having to deep fry something. So a little bit of um, cooking spray will help improve the texture of your, oh my goodness. Great. Come on, Mr. Sun, leave. It's gonna improve the texture of the breading. It's gonna make it more crunchy, but if you want yours to be oil-free, you can definitely leave it out. You know, this is, the thing about cooking is kind of like a personal thing. It's on a person to person basis. Like if you like a certain thing, you should do it that way as opposed to just following a recipe to the T. So I would try it with the oil. I would try it without the oil and then see which one you like best because cauliflower or fried cauliflower is definitely a staple in my diet. It's one of the things that I really like and enjoy. So I think it tastes good even without any sauce or anything else. I eat it on salads, like I eat it I pretty much eat it in every day. It just really tastes good. So if you're working on being vegan or plant-based, you might enjoy this recipe as much as I do. And then in that case, you would come up with your own way of doing things and figure out what you like best. Okay, so since I am cooking mine in the air fryer, all I did was selected the preset for french fries and on my air fryer, that sets it at 400 degrees for 16 minutes. If you're cooking it in the oven, you can still cook your, um, cauliflower on 400 degrees, but it's gonna take a little bit longer just because the method of cooking is different. You'll probably end up having to cook it for maybe 20, 25 minutes, something like that. I will start checking it around the 20, around the maybe 15 to 20 minute mark just to see if they need to be flipped or if they need any attention. So off camera, I did another tray of cauliflower and then I put both of them in the air fryer and selected the preset for french fries. And I did end up using the full 16 minutes to cook my cauliflower. While that was going in the air fryer, I decided to start on the lettuce. So I'm using romaine lettuce for my lettuce wraps. You can use butter lettuce or pretty much any other lettuce that you like. You could also make sandwiches out of the cauliflower. You don't have to do lettuce wraps per se. So I started working on my lettuce and um, all I did really was just took it under the sink and rinsed it off because there is dirt inside of the lettuce. And with this particular bag of lettuce that I bought this time, I definitely noticed a lot of dirt inside of it. So I just peeled back the layers of um, the lettuce leaves and made sure that I rinsed it all the way through and then I kind of removed each leaf from the head of lettuce and set them upside down so that they could um, drain and they wouldn't be like wet when I was ready to assemble my lettuce wraps. After that I started to make my sauce and this is one of those things I'm gonna give you the recipe that I did um, which is really simple, but you can definitely make less of the sauce if you don't need as much. You will see that the mayo that I used is not vegan because I'm currently transitioning and that's the one that I had on hand, but you can definitely use vegan mayo in this recipe and it will be the exact same. So I did a half cup of mayo and a half cup of sweet chili sauce and then I did about a teaspoon of sriracha. Um, I felt like it could have been a little bit hotter, but that is definitely personal preference. If you don't like heat at all, you can leave the sriracha out. It'll still taste really good. Um, and if you don't need as much sauce, you can half the recipe or a quarter of the recipe just to make as much as you need. I think if you did about a quarter cup of each, that would give you the right amount for this recipe. But I'm telling you right now, this sauce is really good. It tastes good on other things. It tastes really good on pasta. So if you want to experiment with trying it on other things, then you should probably do the full half cup of each and that'll give you some extra sauce to play around with and do extra recipes. And if you guys wanna see some other recipes using this sauce, let me know because one of my favorite dishes is Bang Bang Cauliflower Pasta. I absolutely love it. It tastes 
really really good and um actually everybody in my house pretty much likes it so kids included so if you want to see that recipe leave a comment below and let me know and um make extra sauce so you don't have to do it twice once my cauliflower was done i just tossed it in the sauce and that is another one of those things that you can kind of play with to see what you like because if you toss it in the sauce it's going to be a little bit more like soggy as opposed to if you leave it at its full crunch potential when it's first coming out of the oven and it's or it's first coming out of the air fryer um, and you just drizzle the sauce on top so once you have your cauliflower completely done and you have your sauce ready and you either tossed it in the sauce or you're ready to drizzle the sauce on top just place your cauliflower into the lettuce wraps and that's really it this recipe is really super simple but I wanted to break it down in a way that even a beginner can make it without needing help from anybody else my husband cannot cook at all and in every video I'm gonna be trying to make it beginner friendly enough or simple enough that he can watch the video and do it on his own so if he can do it you can definitely do it because he can't even boil water so girl or sir or whoever you are you can do it okay so let me give you the keys you definitely need to shake off the excess batter from your cauliflower because like i said you don't want that extra batter to go into your breading and clump it all up and turn it into a big wet mess you want your breadcrumbs to stay dry, therefore they'll coat your cauliflower beautifully and you won't have any problems. The next one is that you want to cut your cauliflower into small pieces if you want them to be extra crunchy. If you want more surface area for your uh, breading to stick to and you don't care about having a more meaty texture in your finished product, then definitely cut your cauliflower into smaller pieces because again, it will give you the most crunch. And finally, don't put your cauliflower directly into the sauce. Don't put the sauce all over it if you want it to stay crunchy because it will definitely affect the um, texture of the breading after you've already sauced it. Again, that is personal preference. If you like the crunch, don't do it. If you don't mind the softer texture in your finished product, then you can do it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with someone else that you think might also like it. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. So I started working on my cauliflower. Oh my goodness, no you did not, girl. You started working on your lettuce. Don't cut your... Oh my God. Who? Oh hmm. Who, girl. I can't, I can't, I can't. Goodness. Okay, and that's gonna help the breading to kind of, con not concentrate, what is it doing? Um, I don't even know what to say about that. Just, just do it, I don't know.